Good morning, folks. We've got a few interesting advancements in space science today. We'll ask for your input on an important topic. If you didn't catch the potential birth of an active region, you'll get another chance here as we begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours presenting the most impressive trans-equatorial coronal hole we've seen since the last sunspot cycle. IMF from it. We'll be connecting to Earth in the next 48 hours, and this is the second most important seismic magnitude uptick factor in our models. Long-term average is three magnitude six earthquakes per week. We've had none in the last seven days. That ebb about to go back into a flow. The solar wind is intensified. Geomagnetic storms are back. When we mentioned it would be days, we weren't kidding, and we've got more to come. In blue, phi angle shifts of the solar wind magnetic reversal preceded what appears to be another speed surge occurring this morning. For now, the disruption remains at low-level storm conditions, but obviously more coronal hole streams are on the way. The bright active region on the north sits alone on the disk, but not for long. At its teleconnection point across the equator, another bright spot appears and begins to grow. We often saw this last cycle, and it mirrors some of the atmospheric connections we see on Earth. Let's go out next to an incredible pair of baby stars in a cloud of material. If you're unfamiliar with chemical nomenclature, NACL is table salt, and look at how its green patch overlays the blue on the right, the water. Folks, they say that these twin stars were born, spinning, counter-rotating to one another, and are in a cosmic ocean of salt water. By the way, that water was either produced in the Nova event that created the remnant cloud, or by the baby stars. Either way, hello star water. A quick stop at the Hubble tension and the local supervoid to find considerable conflict with the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. I don't normally prefer Milgromian changes, which means modifications to gravity or Newtonian dynamics, but I am also not at all surprised that it out-explains dark matter in terms of observational evidence rather than theory and modeling. In that same vein, we've got stars tossed from their orbits by massive clumps of gas in a galaxy, which they somehow describe as a smoothing of the galaxy and that almost makes sense as long as you don't think about it. But more importantly, these types of stars, including those with hyperbolic and unbounded orbits, have already been well described and have often been blamed on dark matter. This clumpiness in the galaxy, which allegedly throws off the stars, also messes with their dark matter model math. Another brief stop here at the study of dust grain alignment in space. Basically, they say it's either going to go with the magnetic field or the direction of radiation, aka the current. For those who saw our plasma cosmology movie, and remember the dusty kaleidoscopes through which we view the heavens, waves, lines, and crystal structures probably add helix in there as well if we're going to go with magnetic fields too. A quick note for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. There's been a lot of ocean news recently, hasn't there? We summarized it all quickly there yesterday for you. But two episodes previous, we had asked for your suggestions and we will now open that more broadly. As I look back 72 years to when science discovered the Parker instability, I think about how things progress or should progress in science. I recently reread Cyclical Deluges by Walker, World in Peril by White, and The Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas, and I think about how catastrophism was a dying ember on the outermost fringe of everything, a lack of progression for decades. Today, 10 to 50 times the people of a decade ago are aware, and a similar increase in active researchers are publishing in the relevant fields, adding pieces to the puzzle. I look at what happens in mainstream science and how an idea is supposed to be propagated, dissected, thoroughly vetted. By the way, these are all the galactic Parker instability papers from just this year, by the way. It's how it's supposed to be done. That instability, by the way, is the thing that triggers the sun and Earth's catastrophe cycle. The thing that shows how science should have treated catastrophism as a whole, but didn't. So when I decide that our community deserves a modern book on catastrophism, with the people, the evidence, the theories, the timeline, past, future, cover-up, the preparation, and more, I want your help with the more. Please comment today with what you truly can't live without seeing addressed in that book. This is your chance. We greatly appreciate your support. Remember, new Deeper Look episode for website members. Get our existing books and gear at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.